Hi all, so I had a lot of people interested in my first attempt at hydro dipping the other day. Uh, so much so that I thought I'd make a video about it and show you how you can go about doing it. So first you need to prep your body shell like you would do if you were painting it. Um, I've got liquid mask over the windows here. You could probably mask it as well. I think Tamiya mask is quite good with water, but um, liquid mask is obviously very waterproof. So. Um, I've washed the inside as well with fairy liquid, um, always good and seems to work well with the hydro dip I did the other day. Um, the things you won't normally have, hydrographic film, I'll show you this in more detail but this is what it looks like when it comes wrapped up and I'll link to where I got this um, if you're in the UK. Um, and this is hydro design hydrographic activator so this is what you spray on the film to make the ink rest on the water and ultimately go onto your body shell the only other thing you'll need you can see it here is a large container so i'm doing a one tenth tto2 body shell and i've got this 50 litre container um, it's essentially twice as wide as the shell almost twice as long um, one of the key things you need to know is that the body needs to be able to be fully submerged in it. It's hard to get a, a sense of that here. I'll put it down there. Um, but you can see this body can be fully submerged. One of the issues is it needs to go in at a 45 de degree angle when you're dipping. And again, I'll show you this in better detail when we actually do it. Um, but with this, it is possible to go in at 45 degrees and then just slowly dip the back in as well to get the result. So we're going to fill the container um, with hydrographic film. Apparently you need the water to be between 75 and 90. So um, I used a baby thermometer the other day to get it to 85. But I found that um, half a container of hot and half a container of cold tap water seems to get you there. So uh, this is the hot going in. Obviously a little uh, tip these big containers get very heavy when uh, they're full of water so I do the half of hot here carry it out and then uh, fill it up from a bucket with the cold So you can see I've left just enough space at the top, uh, a little bit of uh, room so that when I dip in it doesn't completely overflow because that could take the film with it. So. so the next step is to cut the film. You want to roll it out. Um, you want to kind of want to be ready to dip now because uh, the film can be quite difficult to work with. Um, you want to leave a bit of space around the edge of the film in the container because it does expand when you put the activator on. So I'm going to use the lid of the container to try and mark out the size I need. Now you'll see that it starts to curl up at the edge, so uh, this is where it gets, gets difficult to work with. Some people take the edges, but uh, that actually stops it expanding when it goes into the water. Um, so I'm not going to do that, I'm going to leave it as it is and work with it. Um, what you do want to do is make little incisions all around the side of it, because it will also roll up when it curl up when it hits the water. And if you make tiny incisions about a centimetre, a bit less, into each side of it about 10 centimeters apart then it will only roll in as far as you've made those incisions so i'm going to do that now So that's the film cut. 
it's basically ready to go. It becomes really hard to work with now, especially if it's even a little bit breezy and you're doing this outside, it blows around all over the place, but you can see it's starting to curl up. The other important thing is to get the sticky side of the film down on the water. So to do that, if you lick your thumb and forefinger and just pinch one of the far corners, one side will stick to your thumb and that is the sticky side and that's the side that wants to go down on the water. Um, there's a couple of ways of laying this down on the water. Um, none of them are exact science. Science is especially when it's windy like this. So I'm just gonna go for it and then push out any air bubbles. that's not bad but you can see there's some major air bubbles here you just tap them tap them out to the side so they will make impressions on the print Leave it for about 60 seconds and then it's time for the activator. So this is where you need to work quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is spray on the activator, you'll see the film expand and then I'm going to dip the shell at a 45 degree angle in the container. Give it a shake when it's at the bottom. Try and push all the residual ink aside. This is a messy bit. You are going to get messy doing this. But if you can shake the shell off, bring it up. That is absolutely awful. Uh, it's not the best result on top, definitely. Uh, I think what's happened there is it's gripped the edges. Uh, yeah, so this is a good lesson in what not to do, I guess. So you can see the front of the shell, the, the bonnet is quite good. It's kind of how you want it to be. Although you can see from the initial print, it's expanded an awful lot. The problem here is with the roof. So you can see it's expanded so far, you can't make out what it is even. Uh, I think the sides will look pretty decent. Um, but the roof is a bit of a no-no. Luckily, I always wanted to test a second part of hydro dipping on this shell. So I actually think the roof is going to help us out a bit in this example. But I think the lesson there really, if you're doing this with film, is get a bit more space around the edge. Uh, because the film actually clung to the sides of the container. Um, and that meant there wasn't enough to get it onto the reef it pulled it uh, it pulled it to kind of far apart on the reef which is why you've got that weird uh, weird kind of shape on the roof what you'll also see is it is covered in gunk so are my hands so this is where you need to go and run it under hot or warm water and just get all the gunk off um, and this you can work with it quite roughly it's quite strange you feel like you're going to do it damage but actually it will be okay um, and you need to run it under water until all that gunk has gone. So it's had some time to rest. So you can see now that I've washed all the gunk off. Uh, and when you've washed all the gunk, it, it's really slimy. So when you've washed it all off, you'll know because it feels very matte inside. And like I said, I've rubbed at this really hard. So you don't have to be gentle with it at all. There's some really good bits, some really nice details. Uh, again, it's hard to see on the outside because there's still some slime on the outside. But a nice skull on the bonnet uh, and that bit round there on the front bumper. Upside down skull. <coughs> a 
The sides are alright, they're a bit stretched, but they're quite good. And the back, there's a nice skull right on the back of the, where the uh, boot would be. This side is really stretched, so you can see the skull stretch is still good, still nice and detailed, but uh, really stretched. So the roof, I thought about this, and I'm not sure there's any way you could get around that. Apart from maybe stretching the shell out. So if you were to pull the kind of wings of the shell out when you dipped it, that would then mean it contacted the film at a wider part and it would stay more intact in the middle. Because obviously as you're dipping this, uh, it's pulling the film and if the film if it, the film is as wide as the shell where it first contacts, then obviously you're going to get that pulled bit on the top. And when I was thinking about the first shell I did, I uh, masked off the reef because I wanted to put a bit of a flag on there. So that's probably why I thought the first attempt was perfect and why the second attempt uh, has the reef a bit like that. Um, but like I said, I'm still it still looks pretty good, especially this was always meant to be a bit of a practice shell again. Um, and it's going to give me the opportunity to do another thing, which is to try and hydro dip using paints. So the other thing you can do as well as using film is use paints where you just spray paints into the water and then you dip the shell in. So I'm going to turn it into a bit of an art car. I'm going to put loads of different coloured paints in the water and then dip it again to back the film that I've got. So I'm just going to let this dry and then I'll start doing that. So part two, like I said, I'm, this is a total experiment for me as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all these paints, just spray them onto the water. So I've cleared out the water, got rid of all the ink. Uh, just take this mask off because it's making me talk funny. Um, cleared the water, put fresh water in it because it had loads of ink and all the slimy stuff from the film. But I'm going to spray these in now um, and basically just make a mess of the surface of the water. So this is good, we're learning together. So this is the end result. I obviously didn't use hydro dip for the paint, it's just spray. But I just went a bit mad with all the different colours I had, which is what I wanted to give it a go. Um, this hydrographic film is very dark, so some of them have a lot of kind of bits like this where the colour shows through, and others are much darker. This one is really, it's got a lot of black bits, and you can see some of the pattern there. But the sides are kind of dark, there's a pattern there, but they are very dark. Um, this side, again a bit of stretch detail, but still quite dark. But yeah, again, for another rushed, another rush job, um, and just a, an attempt at a random coloured art car, it's not bad. And I think we've learned a few lessons. So the main one is, uh, if you are hydro dipping a shell, the best thing to do so you don't get this stretched bit on the top is to give it wings, pull the sides out if you can, so that you are almost dipping the shell as if it's a flat surface. And that will mean you wouldn't get this stretched out thing on the top. Or you could do what I did on my first one, like tape off the top and do something else on there. Um, I guess you could also do bits individually to make it easier. Um, the other thing we've learned is polycarbonate paint is no good for hydro dipping. If you're doing trying to do hydro dip with just paint. Um, so yeah, like I say, there's still some pretty cool effects in there. Uh, if anyone wants to know any more, just shout, ask me questions.